questions. All one has to do is to delve into the finer print pages to see that the items of which this government boasts about are not so spectacular. As a matter of fact, I foresee that we will have an increase in unnatural deaths due to this government's cut, a thing which should never be applauded. I'm pretty sure the finance minister should know about inflation and that his supposed increases do not even match, never mind allow for inflation. We know that this new government took some time in getting used to the fact that they are now in government. Perhaps they are not comfortable with those titles because they are sure on a fast track to losing support. They are costing lives, Deputy Speaker, plain and simple. Their end goal is to look like saviors in their final year. We all know that. But to do it in a manner where Manitobans suffer, especially our most vulnerable, to suffer further, it is quite heartbreaking. I have a laugh when I hear ministers, the minister's promises of returning all carbon tax revenues to Manitobans because this government has also promised no cuts to frontline services. Then they refused to define what their idea of a, what a frontline service worker was. So perha perhaps by the time they invoke the carbon tax law, they will rename it in order to avoid giving it back to the hands that fed into it. A typical PC technique. Here they are, yelling about federal transfers, fear-mongering techniques that they have the audacity to chastise the NDP for. Children's special allowances are still going into general revenue, something they once heavily advocated for the NDP to stop. It has not got unnoticed that you have yet again neglected this in your budget. My colleagues across the way should meet any aged out child to see how they had to live because of this inhumane practice. These young adults, due to the mismanagement, don't even have family to fall back on when they become of age because files have been lost as their parent. This government should have a nest egg for them to rely on once they age out. I know not one foster parent having been able to start any kind of education saving plan for their loved foster child. Let's get to switching ministers. The former Minister of Infrastructure told me in July that in the upcoming session, the five-year plan regarding my east side roads would be tabled. Surprise, surprise, then the cabinet shuffle. And surprise, surprise, the new minister had no clue as to how to answer me in our question period before Christmas break. We need those east side roads. With the announcement that medevacs and bombers have been opened up to the highest bidder, we know that we will now face harsher costs due to the monopoly. We know we will be forever encased in cement when it comes to health, food security, and economic opportunity. Wasigamak First Nation needs a lighthouse. This government must have seen the pictures. Navigating during the night is treacherous, especially in emergency circumstances. That office responded to that, responded that an airport beacon is a better solution. But again, the good news budget is silent when it comes to that. The worst part is that this government continues to leave federal money on the table. Then they have, then they complain about the, about how the feds are not helping. And ironically, the PC government says we don't want it because it has to be earmarked for a certain project. Then they turn around and give the municipalities targeted funds. One or the other ministers, please make a decision. This government should allow for municipalities and for First Nations, that is if they ever give funds to First Nations, to choose what's in the best interest for their own community. I say to the government, quit using Manitoba Hydro as a piggy bank and save the the hundreds of thousands of customers from further increases to rates. Protect Lake Winnipeg. This is so common sense among grassroots, but seems to us down this government. Send our children home. Generations before have asked for this. Apprehensions are still widely practiced today, now in the form of CFS. Allow us to return to our system of Indigenous law. That message seemed to have been lost for my question period on Monday. Allow for us to live by our customs and traditions. 
the imposed systems placed upon us have failed consistently. When are the governments going to let us determine our own fates? Indigenous people make up 17% of the population today in Manitoba. We should have a voice at any table because these are our lands. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker.